Hello, Chem 222 class. So I'm doing this uh, as one of your opportunities for extra credit. You've heard me mention it, and I mention it every year, and nobody ever takes me up on it fully. So I figured I'd do a little slideshow in hopes that if even one of you watches this and becomes inspired, then I've done my good deed. Uh, so this Joey is demonstrating, this is my son Joey, he shows up throughout this. This is your 30 day healthy change challenge. And so as long as you start by May 8th, um, you will get your 30 days in. And so some of the choices, well, what you have to do is you have to make a diet change. So it has to be a change in some way to your diet. And this is a perfect time to do it. Um, and so you could do several things. And I'm going to walk through these throughout the show. You could eat legumes, beans every day. That's a big one. These are huge challenges. Eat three pieces of fruit every day for 30 days and you'll be hooked and you'll never go back. Eat a salad every day, so make your own salad. You do have all the time to do that because your body is worth it because that way you don't get sick. You could do G-bombs and I'll explain what G-bomb stands for. Um, and you do it for 30 days in a row. And then you just write at the end of the month, at the end of your 30 days, you'll write a page about what you did and why you did it, what happened in your thoughts. And it's Earth Day, and so you're doing it not for just yourself, but for Mama Earth. All right, the other thought here is so that it would spark, perhaps for at least one of you, a topic idea. Ideally, maybe for two of you, that would be wonderful. So let's get started. Uh, so how SAD is the standard American diet? This is one of my favorite acronyms. So SAD stands for, yeah, SAD would be the acronym for Standard American Diet. In 2010, it's an exciting year since it's 2020, so new reports will come out at the end of this year, and it will probably be even sadder, that nine out of 10 Americans do not meet the minimum requirement of vegetables. And 10 years ago, Joey and I flew to Nepal in 2010, ironically, and we flew on Korean Air, and they asked us, do you want Korean meal or American meal? And... I was like, ooh, let's try the Korean meal. And I have to tell you, it was exactly like this. Looking at the people on the other side of me who picked the US meal, it was brown, beige, completely processed, fried, and had no nutritional value. Whereas the Korean meal was actually spicier than I could handle at the time, uh, and was so vibrant with color and with nutrients and stuff. But only nine out of 10 don't meet the minimum requirement of vegetables, which is actually by the American Cancer Institute, a really minimal amount. Um, I would say you need much more than that, so very few people would meet my requirement. Uh, they also found three out of four Americans do not eat even one piece of fruit a day. Look at that, look at that vibrant. Now, I would contend this is not the best meal because of all that processed cereal. Uh, processed cereal is actually not good, but all that fruit, all that color, as opposed to the beigeness. So Americans, I joke, Americans eat like they dress. Most of you dress the way you eat. And those of you who've known me, who've had me as a teacher, you see that I dress like I eat, which is I'm always wearing vibrant colors. Colors have a big impact on me. Um, but here we go. This is the standard American diet, another way of looking at it. 96% of Americans do not eat at least three times a week greens or beans. 96%, three times a week. We eat them every single day in my house. Uh, and I will tell you that these up here, these candies that are artificially colored green or orange, they don't count on this for these different colors. 98% of Americans don't eat the color orange at least twice per week. And again, beige does not count as orange, nor do little Skittles that are colored orange. There are so many things that are orange. Look up here, look at those apricots. Isn't that amazing? or butternut squash, pumpkin, right? If, if I was around, you guys would be getting it every day because, or every week because sweet potatoes. I make those sweet potato muffins that you're all missing. All right, 99% don't eat whole grains, three or four ounces a day. Three or four ounces is not much. And how most people are getting their grains is in these highly processed ways, uh, which is not uh, healthy. So you know, concerned scientists estimated over 100,000 lives would be saved per year if we met these minimum requirements. And what's really sad about these minimum requirements is this. They allow for 25% of your calories 
to be crap. Discretionary means crap, which is this. And the saddest part is that most Americans, yeah, 25% junk food is okay. This is what your government says. Government's saying a lot of interesting things. This is what's broken down into a nice pie chart. Over 50% of Americans' diet is processed food. Another 42% is animal products. So less than 7% is actual real food, meaning from Mother Nature, Mama Earth Day, fruits and vegetables. In our house, it's very much different than that. 95% uh, of Americans actually exceed this minimum, as we can see in the chart, meaning like 90% of their diet is crap, 95%. And I don't know, maybe I turned half you off. These are some pictures that a guy took. Um, and he goes around the world and he will get a family and they will go buy a week's worth of groceries and then he takes a picture of them. So this is the average American family. Uh, this is from two years ago. We got our Budweiser there. We got all the chips. Each boy gets their own pizza. And look at all this meat, nicely processed. Oh, there is grapes there. The best part about this picture is that amount of grapes, that would be enough for me. Oh, and there are two tomatoes. This is, this is the best part, that lunch lady pizza or any kind of pizza is considered a serving or two servings of vegetables because of the tomato sauce. Right. All right, if we look at young children between the ages of two and eight that actually meet the guideline, it's under one in a thousand, 0.1%, which means that these kids are having that one in a thousand has less than 12 spoons of sugar a day. They actually, the recommendation is under six spoons of sugar a day. So it would be one in a million kids actually gets less than that because sugar is in everything. Uh, and this is the best part. This is a European family. Look at all this milk. Look at all this dairy that they're eating. Um, and apparently bottled water. Everything's packaged. It's kind of crazy. All right, and there, look at that. We finally are getting a family eating fruits and vegetables. And all right, I have a magazine in my office, which none of us have access to right now. That is actually the original pictures. Um, and the people came from the poorest countries actually had the healthiest diets. So we wonder why is there an obesity epidemic? Refined carbs and animal protein is a guarantee you will get cancer. Um, and so my motto in my other class, we've already spent three weeks on this, is keeping it real. So how about it for a whole month? Keep it real. That could be your challenge, that you're not going to buy any processed food in a bag, no chips, no fast food for a month. And at the end of the month, you can go ahead and splurge and tell me what happens. But try and do it for 30 days. It's only 30 days out of your life and see what happens. Oh, I got more to convince you. This is one of my favorite cartoons. Um, and the best part, it's low in carbs. And so the fad keeps going on and on and on, these fad diets. So this is why those diets work, because this is what's wrong with carbohydrates. Soda is pure sugar. Uh, and then these energy drinks, which now take up more than a row, and these highly sugar-laden coffee stuff. Um, so my other class, they've been watching a sugar movie for... Uh, one of their labs, because we do biochemistry. And some one of the students actually admitted to me that while he was watching the movie, he suddenly looked at what he was drinking, which was a strawberry lemonade and had 55 grams of sugar in it. And he was just utterly astounded. And so he's on board to do this change. So let's see, these are, this is another slide I found from Rhode Island, uh, monster drinks. Yeah, give them up, they're awful. Um, I can't believe they're even legal, but uh, you can see the amount of teaspoons. This is the part down here that always amazed me was this little yellow thing. This is just based on ages and the amount of gallons per year these kids are eating or drinking. So boys ages two to five, this is pretty much a gallon of soda a week. And then as they get older, once they're in their teen years, they're drinking two gallons of soda a week. That's average because there are some kids who aren't drinking that like in my household so give up soda and you might be surprised um yeah so we can go with our starbucks give up your starbucks i'm not saying you have to give up coffee but caffeine would be a fun topic to do um 
but yeah, the amount of hidden sugar and fat. I have a good friend and he says, oh, he doesn't eat until four o'clock, but every morning he stops at Starbucks and gets the salted caramel mocha. And so he's getting more calories in before four o'clock than I'm getting in before four o'clock, even though I'm eating like three apples and a salad and a smoothie and stuff. Uh, so Save the Children International, they were, they were a leader in pushing for higher taxes on sodas until, so soda tax, not real yet, uh, they received a $5 million grant from Pepsi-Cola, hooray. And Coca-Cola, of course, couldn't be outdone by this challenge, so they gave them another $5 million. So imagine you give like $20 and you're like, yes, I've given money. How can we even compare to when they get these grants and now they're completely owned by it? This was last year's spring break. Difference a year makes, right? This year's spring break was very different. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics and American Heart Association started endorsing the idea of taxes. And the reason why was because of what's left of the World Bank. They did an analysis. And by basically 10, 20 years from now, we're really screwed because of childhood diabetes. Um, and yeah, you can give the kids a donation. You don't have to buy all this highly sugar laden food processed food. And one of the big evils in there, this is a wonderful topic. One of my top students did this as his topic for Chem 222, uh, was high fructose corn syrup, so HFCS, uh, which in 1975, right before it came out, people didn't really have this. And then within 20 years, 64 pounds per person per year. And it actually went down because of all the artificial sweeteners that are used uh, and the increase in a little bit, it got such a bad rap, but it is still used because it's highly soluble. Uh, this is one of the things from his paper, gosh, that would have been uh, almost 10 years ago because Ryan is in, uh, has a really great job and has gone back for graduate school now. But uh, rats fed high fructose corn syrup lived for five weeks versus a normal rat lifespan, which is two years. So imagine what you're doing to your lifespan if you're eating stuff. And high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup is about equal amounts of fructose and glucose, so all they do is make it a little bit more refined and make it a little bit more fructose because fructose is so sweet. Um, most things have like four or five different corn syrups in them and they're hidden there in the ingredients so you don't realize how much you're getting. Uh, and so there's the rat. He's a little worried. He's saying, oh no, oh no. So there is something called fructolysis, which is the breakdown. Lysis means breakdown of fructose. And this only happens in your liver. And it pretty much, your liver doesn't know what to do with it. So our food has an energy profile. It, I talked about it back in 221. We are energetic beings. And when you eat fake food, which is processed food, your liver doesn't know what it is because energetically it's never seen it. And so it just automatically turns it to fat. It doesn't use it for energy. This is different from real fructose that comes from real food where your body actually does use it for energy. Your liver's like, oh, look at this. I'm gonna use it immediately for energy. So it always gets stored when it's in processed food. When you eat processed food, your body stores it as fat. It cannot use it. And it creates fatty liver disease just like an alcoholic. And they're finding this now in eight, 10 year old children, six year old children, 12 year old children. They have livers just like an alcoholic. And this is really sad that we have allowed this to happen. Um, and so this is due to a process which is the breakdown of fructose, which is seven times, and this is the fructose cross-linking then in the blood, and it causes seven times more damage than glucose does. So there's all this hype about glucose, and I want to keep low carbs, and okay, like in Australia, fructose is okay, because it doesn't cause a rise in the glycemic index. Um, so it's actually, fructose is a higher risk for diabetes, DM is diabetes type 2. Oh, I actually have a reference there. So it's a question a lot of students will have. So you should have references when you do your slideshow. Um, just make them really small at the bottom or you can put them at the end. I unfortunately never did this when I made my slideshow and the slideshow has been 10 years in the making. And so every year a student does an amazing 
project and they inspire a new slide. So don't you want to be that student who picks a topic and inspires? So you can pick something like this and go into the conspiracy stuff. Or here's the reason I did hexagons for that transition. You can decide to do fructose and look at honey. And if you are a Google Doodle nerd like me, you played the game today of the honeybees or whenever you listen to this. And actually, Joey just played it. Didn't even know that I spent time today trying to see. I was going to make it an extra credit and see if you guys could beat me, but there was no score. It just went on and it was addictive. All right. Uh, fructose is the sweetest sugar. When you do your talk, you want to make sure that you have your molecule in there on the slide, maybe in every slide in the upper corner. Uh, and you'll get to do it like this. You'll get to share your screen and yours only has to be 10 minutes. So like 10 slides. All right, fruit and honey. Um, and see, look, nobody has to see your face, although we might make it that way. Uh, bad news was the high fructose corn syrup, but the good news is fructose coming from real food, meaning raw honey and fruit, and yeah, pound of honey is 2 million flowers, 55,000 miles. And I forget how many bees, because every bee only makes like about a quarter teaspoon of honey in its lifetime. The bees are freaking amazing. And they are one of the things that they disappear, everything disappears um, because of the amount of pollination they do. So fruit, fruit has been so poorly maligned and um, three pieces of fruit per day. So Uncle Bill and Melinda, uh, they did a study in 2010, and they'll probably come out with another one. They did. It was the largest analysis ever of death and disease risk. Uh, so this is a meta-analysis where they do with computers, uh, looking at every study that's ever been done. The number one cause of illness and death in this country is indeed diet. And the number one, yeah, there's our sad. We dress like smoking is moved now to number two. Uh, that Americans eat like they dress, beige and bland colors, I already mentioned that. Uh, that was Cookie Monster trying to make his choice. The worst aspect of our diet was fruit, that we don't eat enough fruit. Uh, smoking, again, is not number one. Diet's number one, and the worst thing in our diet is we don't eat fruit. And whenever I do this talk with my other class, they all finally go, you mean I can eat fruit? Not fruit juice. Fruit juice has lost the fiber, but the fiber is tied, the sugar is tied to the fiber. So you don't absorb all of the sugar. The fiber actually coats your intestines, the first part of your small intestines. And so the sugar can go through and it feeds your microbiome, the bacteria in your gut that keeps you healthy. Um, I get into that in a moment. So there we go. There's the beige, the American diet. The more colorful, that looks kind of like it got a little old there. All right, we don't get to have a potluck. Maybe we can meet at the park and have a picnic together in June. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, I'll know if you guys listen to this because you can send me a thumbs up and say, yes, let's do a picnic in June for some reason or other. All right, so the fruit sugar is bound to the fiber, I said. So you have this really slow absorption and also the colors tell you there's all these phytochemicals. So phyto just means plant. So you could pick one of those uh, and it boosts DNA repair. Uh, citrus is really good at this, but they all are. And so an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So what would three apples a day do? What would that keep away? This is Joey 20 years ago must have been around Halloween, and he and I both eat three apples a day. Um, and I tell you, I have, it's been a long time on this journey, um, and I just want to share my enthusiasm. And if I can even get one of you to say, yeah, I'm going to commit, that's going to be my healthy change for the next 30 days. The thing that's awesome is berries are going to come into season over the next month. And so it is actually three fruits per day and then another serving of berries. But you can make it berries. Um, all right, sugar destroys your brain. Again, this is not fruit sugar, but fruit juice is not the same because you've lost the fiber. The phytonutrients have decomposed in the time by the time you get to that. So sugar destroys your brain. Two commercial baked goods per week. So these aren't my muffins that I don't get to share with you, but two commercial, meaning you bought it at the store, you bought it at Starbucks. Sorry, Riley, but what you guys serve. Yeah, the Easy Bake Oven I never had. Thank you, Mom, for not getting that for me when I was a kid. You double the amount of depression. 
oh, how many of you eat only two commercial baked goods per week? Most people buy one every day. So imagine how much higher depression rates are. And imagine if you didn't. Most people don't realize the connection between sugar and depression, but it's huge. And it has to do with several things. Uh, one is the free radical damage. You've heard me talk about free radicals and oxidative stress. So oxidation just means losing electrons. Sugar is one of the best things. Fructose is even better than glucose at this, at stealing um, electrons. And your brain is addicted to sugar. So when they look at brains of cocaine addicts and sugar addicts, it turns out, and most people are like, mm, really? No, I don't think so. But um, then they'll usually think about it more. So the red is where you have normal dopamine levels. Dopamine is what makes you pay attention. Like how many of you have already walked away to start drinking a sugar laced something? Most of you probably turned me off already. All right. So these guys, people who are um, overweight and coke addicts, they no longer get a reward. So they have to keep taking their addiction. Uh, so you get this overstimulation and the dopamine stops. And this looks just like an Alzheimer's brain. These are brain scans that have been done and it is reversible. It is absolutely reversible with diet. If you start eating healthy, imagine, we all want our brains to look like this. Just imagine how you would live, Phil. You would just be so vibrant. And so when we're all allowed to go out again, you'll just be like, I just feel so amazing. I just want to eat the nutrient dense food. We are most malnourished country. We're this rich country and we don't get the right food. We're eating highly processed. We don't get the food that feeds our brain. Uh, this is when Joey uh, gave up eating a lot of stuff when uh, it was a book I read out loud to him on the chapter of how sugar destroys your brain. Um, supplements don't help. Supplements have been processed. So taking a pill is not the same as eating an orange. Maybe the pill has more vitamin C, but the vitamin C in the orange is so much more bioactive and comes with other things. And vibrationally, your body doesn't know what the supplement is. And so it doesn't have the effect. And so that's one of the things I'm going to warn you. When you do your paper, if you pick something like vitamin C, most of the studies are done on the isolated vitamin C and they don't notice an effect. But when they do the study where the people actually eat the real orange, they do see an effect. I've been trying to decide how you could do a um, double blind study. Because how could you tell if you got the orange and then the other person doesn't get the orange, but you're not supposed to know who ate the orange. So we'd have to make these fake oranges. And how ethical would that be? How ethical are any of these studies? All right, sugar and protein equals advanced glycation end product, my other favorite acronym, uh, which means your body is gonna age. And I have visuals in case you don't get it. These are all the things that can cause free radicals. Uh, sugar, unhealthy fats, which means fried fats, trans fats, fake fats, uh, stress. Stress is probably the number one cause. And so eating healthy, your body feels less stress, you're healthier, you're happier. So cut an apple in half and just let it sit there. This is what oxidation is. This is what's happening to your body. But if you eat apples, they protect you. All right, uh, over exercising, smoking alcohol, medications, yeah. Uh, this chocolate cake, so it's your birthday. So like Janae, her son had his 10th birthday. Absolutely celebrate and have the most beautiful decadent cake. You just don't eat it every day. So for 30 days, go without. All right, so free radicals. Well, okay, so the first picture is just from breathing. Um, and that's the power of meditation, which is the next extra credit that I will be videotaping this weekend. So um, breathing does create free radicals. It's just part of the process. Uh, you have a defense, which is eating healthy foods that gets it back to normal. Another big one are cancer causing chemicals. And I know this picture is blurry, but if you wanna go into an evil for your topic, you can't pick these guys because they're single elements, but there are compounds of lead, or arsenic, but formaldehyde. I had somebody did a wonderful paper on formaldehyde. And for their presentation, they wrote a song. There was somebody who could sing, and it was so fun. I've had a couple of people do songs as their presentation. They got everything in there. Uh, they made up the lyrics. Benzene is the number one car classic carcinogen. Uh, the different um, 
so polyvinyl chloride, PVC piping. So you're going to do a lab with plastics, and so that might inspire you. So yeah, eating fast food, eating fried food, uh, stress. This is causes of free radical. You can pick it. You might as well smoke while you're drinking the soda because they both cause illness. Uh, sugar, highly processed. Again, very rarely should be eating that. And yet we all obsess about, oh my God, how many x-rays did you have this year? Oh my God, the x-rays are going to cause it. Look at this, your food. Oh, bacon. Do you know that bacon is actually a class one carcinogen? You all probably know that if you were in my class before. Do you know how hard it is to be labeled a class one carcinogen? So smoking is. And plutonium. So if you're going to eat bacon, why don't you just go and start go to Hanford and lick the reactors there or something or the dirt because you might as well just take in straight plutonium. You're guaranteed it causes cancer, but more than likely you'll get clogged arteries and have a heart attack. Bacon, give up bacon for the month and you don't have to go to the fake bacons because they're fake. Just give it up. See if you can do it. Although eating the three apples a day and giving up bacon, go for a double dose. See what happens. It's for your life. It's not just for those extra credit points. All right, sunshine is over is is underrated. Um, too much sunshine can cause cancer, um, but higher rates of cancer are in the areas that get the least amount of sun. So vitamin D is an amazing topic. Oh, viruses, we're there right now. So viruses can cause free radical damage, uh, and you are what you eat, and cancer, of course. Uh, so what, is, what does free radicals cause? Cancer. You can pick whichever one you want. Um, so I've been there, done that, and that's a whole different story. Uh, free radicals destroy your cell membranes. Every cell in your body has cell membranes in three dimensions around it. And free radicals, this is the walls in your house. I talked about this already. If you start getting holes in the wall in your house and your walls suddenly disappear, you don't have a house anymore. You don't have cells anymore. If you don't have a cell membrane, you're dead. If you don't have DNA, the cell actually survives. It can't reproduce, but it does survive. It is your cell membranes that you should be worried about. Oh, if you've never seen the picture, my heart is healthy. I don't want a heart that looks like that. This looks like it's covered with bacon. This looks like an apple. Okay. Yeah, and if it's not, this is that fatty liver I talked about. If you're drinking soda, if you're drinking the monster drinks, you don't want a fatty liver. Yeah, don't go there. Uh, cataracts, so most people end up having cataract surgery. Uh, this woman is probably younger than me. If you want to age yourself, uh, quadruple the rate. You can smoke. We all know that smoking and secondhand smoke is so terrible. Uh, and you end up being immune compromised, meaning more susceptible to viruses. Sound familiar right now? So why not eat healthy so you're not susceptible to any viruses ever or bacteria uh, and inflammation? Oh, but we have a pill for all these things. Or you could just eat healthy and feel more vibrant. And that is a picture of a cancer cell, in case you've never seen one. Uh, they are not normal. They are not evil. They are just misguided. They would like to be normal. So this is ROS, which is radical oxygen species. These are the free radicals. And yeah, bacon might be cute, even with the cheese whiz curl there. And antioxidants mean they're antioxidation. So they fill in the missing electron. So berries, fruit. Oh, but I keep going. Uh, this is the ORAC value. So you can pause me and, and read it, but it has to do with it decreases oxidative stress. And these are, oh, look at all those berries, the more vibrant colors. Um, so you're like, oh, maybe not. I come back and talk about berries at the end. So you need more stimulation. So Joey, my son, he likes controversy. So he picked as his topic, aspartame, uh, which is the pink envelope, um, NutraSweet. And there's a lot of controversy with like rats that were dead and then suddenly they weren't dead. Um, like all the data was fudged. Uh, or you can look at Splenda. So these are food additives, so they don't have to go through the same regulations. And this is really scarier or as scary to me. Those greens mean chlorine. 
we actually took a sugar molecule and put chlorines on it. Not trying to make a sweetener. They were trying to make like a, a dry cleaning product or something. And then somebody licked their finger in lab and went, ooh, that's sweet. And we started adding it to food. And yeah, not good. All right. Okay, so I just did the wrong thing. I pushed on the wrong button, sorry. Uh, this is what happens. These are all the foods that are loaded with artificial sweeteners. And you can see they just need a little bit. Ace K is a very interesting. So I'll tell you the flubbed. You don't want to be part of this story next year. Uh, one of the worst talks I've ever had by a student. Uh, he did Ace K. He's like, oh, yeah, it's perfectly safe for you. That was like his whole talk. He had two slides. If you give me a talk that has two slides and absolutely no scientific data that you're going to have behind it. Uh, oh, I talk about some of these other ones. Um, but this is the answer back. Answer our friends. Because when the answer back, I was really worried the first, like over the two weeks when you guys were all on break and I was working. Because there weren't any ants in my kitchen and it was beautiful weather. And but the answer back, because when there's going to be an earthquake, the ants disappear the week before the earthquake. And so I was a little worried. So if your ants disappear, the other thing is the uh, elephants know when the tsunami is going to happen. So this is like the earthquake and then the tsunami happens after the earthquake. The elephants, right, in Indonesia, they all went a week early to higher ground. So if your pet elephant or your pet cow, the cows probably are domesticated, but they know if they start going up to the mountains and the ants disappear, you should follow your elephant. And so I had a student I always tell the story and she said, but Dr. Sherpa, if my elephant goes to the mountain, that's a volcano and it will probably explode because that's Mount Hood. And I said, you know what? Elephants are pretty smart. Your animals are smart. Just follow wherever they're going, just follow them. And they'll know not to go where there's gonna be a volcano going off. All right, so I promised I was gonna mention the microbiome. Standard American diet and your gut, look how unhappy they are. Bacteria is your friend. So this is again a slide from a previous student. So the microbiome regulates body weight control and glucose metabolism. Saccharin and ACE-K both alter the gut. These are studies from only two years ago in 2018. They change your gut microbiota. So it is called the microbiota. Uh, the microbiome is their DNA. It's just more fun to say. Uh, they actually make you more glucose intolerant. They exasperate diabetes. And so people who are diabetic, they tell them to take fake sugar and it makes it worse. The mice that were fed artificial sweeteners, just like the humans, actually gain weight. And you want to stay in school so you don't get the job as the person who has to analyze the rat feces. When the person who had to analyze the rat feces, they found chronic inflammation of the gut and changes in their neurochemistry and increased lipo means fat and genesis means to make. So more fat. Uh, and so you, your microbiome wants fiber. There is an unhappy one eating bacon and artificial sweeteners and crappy food. And this is one that's going jiggling, jiggling and giggling. We haven't had that lecture yet. All right, I've had people want to do, they're like, oh, what about xylitol? Xylitol is a molecule. Uh, Stephosoid is a molecule. So these are no calorie natural sweeteners. Uh, they do have a dark side. So xylitol binds the bacteria in your mouth, regulates blood glucose. So you can pick them. Every topic can have a dark side. So look at both sides. And how about coconut oil? I always have somebody who's like, Oh, can I do caprylic acid? Because I'm really into that keto thing and taking the MCT oil every morning in my coffee. And oh yeah, I can make for the picnic that we're going to have, I'm going to make the keto butter coffee recipe. And there it is. I'll even add chocolate because Sherpa loves chocolate. Chocolate's a really cool topic too. I, this is a picture from Nepal. We went over the gnarliest pass in the world, 5,000 meters. You can do your little factory label and figure out how high we were, which my body doesn't do well above 4,000 meters. We were higher than Mount Rainier. Anyway, we had we ran out of food. It was just Joey, me, and Pimba. And we, there, we saw nobody for four days because we're in the middle of nowhere. This pass is awful. Nobody does it. And I don't know why we did it. It was really awesome. We finally found this tent. These were yak herders. And they took us in. And this is a guy making us butter tea. 
this is the real original and I absolutely love it. It's before this and they didn't add these fake processed oils. So I was big into the coconut oil. I did coconut, the oil pooling every morning and there's all these things and I used to tell people, oh, have coconut oil. And some of you had Bernadette as your teacher or Dr. Whis Whitman, Jessica, her feet are touching the ground, I asked her. Uh, or you have me right now and this was me. I didn't want to know. I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to know the dark side to coconut oil. But two years ago, my doctor wanted to just do blood work on me because they do that. When you hit certain ages, they're like, let's do blood work. And turned out my cholesterol was like 235. It was higher. Yeah, I was bragging my mom. I'm like, oh, I'm higher than yours. I wasn't actually worried about it because um, there's other reasons why I can be. My vitamin D was low. And so, but it turned out I happened to one day just Google something. And then I went down this rabbit hole. These are actual rabbit arteries. And this one was the rabbit that was fed coconut oil. And this is the rabbit that was fed olive oil. This is a blocked artery from high cholesterol. And yeah, double the cholesterol, 20 fold higher triglycerides from coconut oil. And I suddenly went, oh, I wonder if that's why my cholesterol was high. So who knows? Because 20 years ago when I had it tested, it was like 160 or something. Um, and it's really funny. I told my class, I kind of had an ego going in. I was like, oh, maybe it's down to like 120 now. And it was like double that number. Um, I haven't had it done since because I'm not actually worried. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about cholesterol, but I'm fairly certain I found the culprit. And so coconut oil topically to, for your skin, for your hair. Um, I don't do the coconut oil pooling or cleaning your mouth every morning, and I miss it desperately. It also increased insulin levels um, and other issues. So it's called, I don't know how to say this name correctly, Kerala is a southern province of India. It has the highest rates. They have liberal amounts of coconut meat. That's the area where the coconuts come from. So this is me. I don't want to let go of my coconut. It was really hard. I was just like, or I stayed up really late, broke the rule. We actually made the internet now that I can't be on it past a certain time. But um, I was up really late and I couldn't believe it. Um, highest rates of cardi. So in India, they call it cardi uh, artery disease. We call it cardio or cardiovascular disease here. So heart attack, stroke, diabetes, metabolic syndrome is prediabetes in India. That area has doubled the US rate. These are people who are thin. And we think of them as like healthy. And it turns out they don't. And even though they're trying to say cholesterol doesn't cause problems, there is a point where it does. Um, Sri Lanka also has much higher rates of heart disease. Uh, and it is estimated coconut oil may actually have higher cholesterol raising effects than butter and meat. And so, yeah, there you go. You can, you saw my references kind of there. This was, I put this piece in here also because you need to find a topic, you want to go into the topic and you might be surprised what you find out. So you might go into it wanting to tell everybody how freaking amazing coconut oil is and caprylic acid and this and that. And then you need to bring in, but this is what I found out and looking at the actual scientific studies, um, so this was me when I did the Oregon coast. I don't have a bag on because Joey was in the car carrying all this stuff. Um, and this is me letting go of coconut oil. Uh, and I would tell you when you do your slideshow, put pictures of yourself and your family in there, um, with their permission, of course. So there are no healthy oils. So that's their thing. Give up oils. All oils have been highly processed. Olive oil also. I don't care what you hear. There's so much misinformation, especially the advertisements that are trying to convince you they're making money. There's this one doctor whose advertisements, I, I can't believe it's even legal for him to tell people and to say, oh, I've been a doctor for this many years and I can tell you this. He's giving such misinformation out there and hurting people. Um, so I make my own salad dressings. Uh, for the fat, I will use natural fats like tahini or avocado or something. Um, and, or not even any, I might just throw like five oils in the blender. And so I make our salad dressing every two or three days. Um, so these are, this is a slide I found.
from the spruce, right? Uh, yeah, right? These things are highly processed. No, because I have students. So we're going to cast out the evil oils. This is, yeah, what can you use if you're baking? Because you're like, yeah, I want to go to that picnic. I'm going to bake something. Bananas instead of coconuts. Pumpkin. You try the avocados. I like avocados just how they are. That's my cat saying, oh, let's go for avocados. Yes, my cat eats avocados. His nose is covered in avocado. And I know everywhere online they're saying I'm killing Rocky. Rocky was three times the size when we got him, had half as much hair. He was so ill and could not jump up on his chair. Um, and this is the fairies and the owl whispering to me. The secret is this, which is called aquafaba, which is the water off of beans when you either cook your own beans, uh, which is what I usually do, or if you open a can of beans, uh, one to one ratio substitute for the oil, everyone will be like, this is the best brownies I've ever had. Uh, and it works great. Make sure you clean your hands, wash your hands really well. And all that butter you have, go ahead and make a nice, beautiful butter sculpture with it. All right. And instead of sugar, I use dates and I soak them. Uh, so the, not date sugar, because that's highly processed, but dates um, have fiber in them. And so I soak my dates in coffee uh, and it softens them. And then that's the sugar that I use because you're also getting the fiber. And just remembering you have a choice. So, oh, I, I have to go through one more thing after this. We're not quite done. But you can be like, you know what? I, I didn't even listen to your show. Why don't you give up the ramen noodles? Or instead of just giving up something, let's replace it for 30 days. Instead of eating like that, let's make our own food for 30 days. You can do it. This is amazing curry and naan, homemade naan. Instead of this highly refined commercial baked goods, let's go with fruit, three pieces of fruit a day. Isn't that beautiful? And instead of sugar, Look at her, look how thin her waist is. Look how happy she is. All right, extra credit, 30 days, challenge, make a change. And so, or this is a really tough one. I've never had anybody actually succeed at this. So there you go, the ultimate challenge is eating a rainbow every day. Um, I come close. Uh, I probably don't do it every day. I'd have to be really conscientious to make sure I got every single color in every day. So it's not every meal, but in the day that you would get every color in. And especially if you have kids, kids do naturally gravitate towards fruit. Um, you can do, I'm gonna give up fast food for the month. Every student I've ever had does, does this. They end up going out for fast food on day 31 and they tell me they couldn't eat it. They ate three bites and they ended up being so sick for the rest of the day. So just do it. This is a book about how our inner cities are, all the people have is fast food. They have no access to real whole food. Um, and so he's an awesome, awesome author. I recommend he has a great website, Joel Furman. You can look him up. He has like TED Talks and longer talks and stuff. So make a choice. Say, I'm going to do a salad every day. Um, just eat real food for 30 days. Cook without oil for 30 days. You just use water to saute. I cook everything from scratch and no oils. Three years ago, I said it couldn't be done. Oh, there's Rocky. Or you could take Dr. Furman's challenge. I'm not, I, 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 I sorry, the cat um, decided he wanted to be part of the show. So Dr. Furman talks about something called G-bombs. So do G-bombs every day for 30 days. This is actually a really tough challenge. So you might get extra, extra credit if you actually can do it. So G-bomb stands for greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds every day. And there's Joey. Joey's like, yeah, let's do it, mom. And we don't quite make it, but we do eat our greens every day. So first president, President George Washington said it prevents putrid disorders. So they went out and foraged for greens. One in 25 Americans eat enough greens. Every time you have greens, 20% decrease in heart disease. Oh, but why? This would be such a cool topic. It has to do with this guy, CoQ10, ubiquinol. So ubiquinol has extra electrons. So it gives up electrons to the free radicals and fixes them. So it fills in and it fills in again. So it's done it twice. The problem is now you're down here and you're stuck. 
And so your body wants to get back where it can fight, be the antioxidant. And this is the part that's cool. After it donates the electrons, it gets the electrons back from chlorophyll, from eating greens. This is a picture of hemoglobin, which is your blood, and chlorophyll, which is what makes plants green. And oh my gosh, they look exactly the same, except for the middle. We have iron, great source of magnesium, also eating your greens. So eat a salad every day. Your brain will be 11 years younger. You will feel so vital. So you might be going, oh, I don't want to have a brain of a 10 year old. Actually you do, because they're so playful and wonderful. Um, it would be fascinating, because most of you, your brain age is older than what you are which is not what you want. You wanna keep your brain young and healthy. Eat greens every day, make a salad every day for the next 30 days. Yet in the study, the average person, I mean, what is a 10th of a serving? That's like nibbling on one leaf on your hamburger. Yeah, let's not do that. Do a double challenge, right? There's Cookie Monster eating his greens and there's your microbiome, loves the greens. All right, eat beans every day. Yeah, most important predictor of survival. In older people, how about in younger people? How about that you're gonna live to be vibrant when you're 100? Most people are like, I don't wanna live even 80, 80. You get old and cranky. Oh, I know people who are in their 80s and 90s who are vibrant, who are working. Um, so there's a the happy soy. It's filled with protein and fiber and prebiotics. Pills do not do the same thing as eating legumes. Your microbiota wants fruit and legumes. Best two things and a green salad every day. It then feeds you back. So this would be a cool topic. So it releases propionoate and that actually relaxes your stomach and it slows down sugar absorption. It's called the second meal effect. It was originally called the lentil effect because they thought it was only lentils that did it, but it's all legumes. Um, and so if you then eat dessert after, you actually don't get the sugar spike that you would uh, because these guys slow down the sugar for everything you eat after them. So this doesn't mean you can eat legumes and then eat crap after every day. Um, but there we go, healthy kids, lowers blood pressure and actually decreases tummy fat. Uh, so it'll be swimsuit season for all of you. Um, so your microbiome, something really important. It communicates with your immune system. So just in case I haven't convinced you yet, your microbiome is everything. It's more than half of the cells in your body. You have trillions of cells and a little bit more than half of them is your microbiome. It determines your response and recovery to cancer, inflammation. Oh, and the common cold, I believe that is a coronavirus. Yeah, you know what's fascinating is corona means crown. So we should all be wearing crowns on our head. So just imagine if your microbiome is healthy, uh, so longevity, meaning not just that you live long, but you li live a vibrant length. Uh, so symbiosis is we're in communication with each other. We protect them and they feed us. They are actually what makes our vitamins for us. Again, taking supplements actually suppresses their ability to make the vitamins we need. If you are vitamin deficient, if you are tired, it's because your microbiome is out of balance. You got to eat plant-based and fiber. All right, so change your diet, change your gut. Cranberries and pomegranates, I love. Uh, it's not pomegranate and cranberry season though. So I made the slide in the fall. Oh, and nuts, nuts and seeds feed your biome. All right, look how happy, look how sad. Go from this to this for 30 days. Yeah, we don't even wanna talk what smoking does to your microbiome. Uh, this is because of onions. But I found this slide and I just wanted to mention, there's lots of topics there. So you don't get to do chocolate as your topic, but you can Google, this slide's a little out of focus, which is good. You can Google, what is the chemistry of chocolate? And then you can find the molecule and then you can say, hey, I wanna do my topic on that. Or this is a really cool one, the capsaicin, which is the hot chili pepper. And there's so much research on that. Or the sulfur, the thiosulfonates that are in onions and garlic, um, or why you're, if you really wanna know why your urine smells after you eat asparagus, you could pick asparagus as your topic. And I'm sure there's lots of research. So reminder, you want molecules, chemistry geekiness in your 
presentation. All right, and mushrooms. We're just going through the G bombs here. So eat mushrooms every day. Mushrooms, um, they have been used medicinally and nutritionally. Their flavor, their texture, they're freaking amazing. Uh, know what you're doing if you're gonna pick them. And they have bioactive compounds. So you can pick any of those. Lactones, lectins, terpenoids. So you can't do mushrooms, but you can pick something in the mushrooms. Um, that's coptis, which is, for, or you can do psilocybin. So what happens is that one person who's still watching goes, oh, she finally hit something I want to do research on. It's actually a really fascinating topic, and there's actually some really cool research on it and um, some really cool medicinal uses. You always have a guide, though, which, um, anyway, so if you want to do something like that. This is another picture from Nepal. These are mushrooms from high in the Himalayas. This is, again, a different day, different trek. Uh, we had no tent, nothing with us, and Pima kept saying, the goats and yak herders will take us in. So Pimba was a yak herder <coughs> when he was um, younger with his grandpa. And so they did. I, I was like sitting there not believing him, but um, they did. This, these are, there you go, some molecules that are found in mushrooms. Uh, there's the goats that's climbing on Joey 10 years ago. That's me and Joey sleeping with the goats in the goats little place. Never ever drink alcohol with mushrooms. Me and Airy Berry Fairy had the experience and um, yeah, it's not pretty, don't do it. All right, but eat mushrooms. So I still go mushroom picking. She won't eat them because it was such a traumatic experience for her, but they are antiviral, antioxidative, anti-tumor, immunomodulatory, which means they enhance your immune system. They protect you against inflammation. They block pain perception. They help you to keep your blood glucose level. They protect your liver. Uh, they protect if you have chronic radiation stress. And the biggest thing they do is they protect your lungs. You have to cook mushrooms because they do have a mild toxin uh, that is inactivated when you cook it. Um, but there's so much research on them. And so praise the mushrooms and eat mushrooms. And if you want to do the magic mushroom uh, chemical as your topic, uh, somebody picks it every year. It's actually pretty cool research. Nobody's ever picked mushrooms. By the way, the other big lung protector, uh, that looks like ginger. So the molecule in ginger, really cool topic. All right, I said I would do the berries because it was in the G-bomb. So greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries every day, serving of berries. Look at that, that's a molecule. They have so many antioxidants. So you don't get to do strawberries, but find the molecule in them if you're a strawberry person like me. Um, so the skin color attracts insects. Which one is the best one? Oh, whatever one you're eating. They all have different molecules and there's so much blueberries. Today we did a strawberry smoothie. I do, we get frozen, frozen berries and I do a smoothie every day with greens and berries and then um, some kind of liquid, usually tea or I get soy milk from the soy bean ladies. It's unsweetened. Um, blackberries because they're dark color, all the berries, cherries. Um, and so again, these guys are loaded with antioxidants, but this is really cool. So S is for seeds, but I think he should have made it spice up your life. This is to make the best chai. This is us in Tibet. Um, this is the head nun at the highest monastery in the world. Her father had been the head lama and Pimba saved his life 20 years before. And she heard, um, I didn't understand anything because it was all in Tibetan, um, but uh, the, yeah. Anyway, she came over and wanted to honor Pimba. Um, she had never met him, but had always heard the story from her father that um, about the Sherpa guide from Nepal who had saved his life. And so anyway, purpose of showing the slide, besides getting to show off my picture, which is a really cool story. Uh, remember that ORAC value? Oh, this is where the berries are down here. The biggest things that can affect your antioxidant level is all the spices. Cinnamon, cinnamon aldehyde, uh, oregano, all of these have a molecule in them that you can then write a whole paper, turmeric. 
Nobody has ever done cloves. I don't actually even know what sumac is, but look how high they are on this. All right, that would be really fun to do that. Or you can say, mm, I wanna just drink more water. Here's a reason this slide is here. I wanna drink more water. Everybody who's ever decided that for the month, their diet's already perfect, mm, I don't think so. But you're like, you know what, Dr. Sherpa, you didn't even inspire me at all. Maybe this will be your topic, hyaluronic acid. So in Asia, they actually do this. It is high beauty is you put snails, the snails are out. I see them every day on my walk. And if you wanna do your talk with the snails on your face, no one's ever taken me up on this. This is a really awesome topic. It's in all beauty creams and it is what makes our face, our skin uh, hold on to water. Um, and so it's, here we go, there's the molecule. It's a really fun topic. So if you're like, yeah, I don't wanna do a healthy change, then you can just walk around, do your presentation with the snails on your face and um, there you go. All right. Or bee venom is used. Like you're like, yeah, I wanna do, I, I don't know. I was trying to find topic ideas. I'm gonna be making two more of these slideshows. So maybe one of them will give you a topic idea, but make a healthy change. Do G-bombs for the month, make it a big healthy change. And then you just send me an email, tell me what you're gonna do. Say for the next 30 days, I am gonna eat lentils every day or beans, any kind of legumes. It's a tough one, take on a big challenge. Don't do something like really simple or say, I'm not gonna do fast food and I'm gonna eat beans every day. So make it a double challenge, go for it because it's your life, it's your health. And I want you all to live long and prosper and always choose love. Loving yourself will help you to love everyone else. All right, bye-bye.